Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. Agents can autonomously perform tasks using tool calling and feedback from tools, often running in a loop. But one request we get from users is, how do I take multiple agents and combine them together into a multi-agent system? We're releasing a new library called LangGraph Supervisor that allows you to do that pretty easily. And I'll show it to you in action right now. So here's a really simple example of a multi-agent system with a supervisor and two separate agents. We have a math expert that has tools for various mathematical operations. We have a research expert with a mock web search tool. So we ask a question that requires both agents. It needs to use search to get the headcount of FANG companies and the math expert to sum them all together. It's obviously a highly simple example, but it shows the overall flow. So what happens is the supervisor takes the request and routes it to one of the agents. Initially, it routes it to the research expert to perform search. The research expert does search, finds the result, and you can see it hands back off to the supervisor. The supervisor then has the results from our research expert and then calls the math expert to compute the sum. There it is. The math expert then hands off back to the supervisor, which then responds directly to the user with the overall output of the combined headcount. So this is a very simple example, just showing the handoff between a supervisor and two different agents, each of which return their results back to the supervisor. And the supervisor then determines what to do next and when to just respond with the overall result to the user. So as mentioned, this library is using a supervisor pattern. And the idea here is just as we showed, you have a supervisor that is connected to various agents and you can think about those agents basically as subgraphs of this overall system. And really what's happening is, as we showed in the example, the supervisor receives some input from a user, decides which agent to call, hands off information to that agent. And I'll talk about that in detail below. But basically, the agent will receive everything it needs from the supervisor to perform its work. The agent then follows classic tool calling action and feedback loop until it completes. And then we give a second handoff back to the supervisor. And again, I'll talk a lot about that information transfer back to the supervisor, which can then make decisions about what to do next. It might be call another agent or it might just be exit. So before I get into the code, I do want to just explain the handoff mechanism, because that's really the most important thing to understand. This is a cartoon showing you the overall flow. Let's just walk through it carefully. So you have a person issues a request to the supervisor. The supervisor then makes a decision about which agent should handle that request, okay? That's this handoff idea, okay? So the supervisor basically engages a handoff to one of the agents based upon the nature of the request. That's really concept one to understand. Now, concept two is once this handoff is initiated, the agent itself inherits the entire message history between the human and the supervisor. That's because each agent is a subgraph, but this is important to understand that each agent just kind of gets that history by default. So information is naturally passed from supervisor to agent that way. All the messages between supervisor and human are just inherited. So the agent can use that history to determine what to do. And when the agent completes, which is to say no more tools are called, we pass back the result to the supervisor. That's what this handoff is showing right here. Now, a natural question to ask is, what information specifically is passed from the agent back to the supervisor? That's a very important point, and you can configure that. We'll show that in the code, but basically you can use a particular flag called output mode to determine, do you want to just only pass that final agent AI message back, which is effectively the agent response? Or you can also pass back the entire internal agent message history. So that's up to you as to what you want to pass back to the supervisor. In this toy cartoon example, I'm showing only passing back that final message indicating the agent output. Then the supervisor, as you can see here, has that agent output as well as the tool call indicating handoff back to supervisor and it proceeds. So now we've seen how the information flow works. Let's actually look at this in a little bit more detail. So I'm in a notebook now, define my LLM. I'll pick a few tools. In this case, I'll have an add, multiply, and web search tool. And I'm going to find two agents. So I'm using our pre-built create react agent. And again, I supply the model, the tools, the agent name, and 
the system prompt. Now, each of these, again, are just simple React style tool calling agents. They're gonna follow a flow just like this. So what's gonna happen is the LLM is going to make a decision to call a tool, the tool will be called, feedback or result from the tool call we pass back to the LLM. This loop proceeds until no more tool is called. That is that final message or agent output that will then be passed back to the supervisor as you'll see in a minute. Now we create supervisor and you can see in the system prompt, I'm just gonna explain the two agents I'm connecting to it and when to use each. So for current events, use the research agent. For math, use math agent. I pass those agents as subgraphs. I pass those agents, I supply my model. Now this is that output mode. This is what's determining what we pass back to the supervisor. So now we're gonna use our library to create a supervisor. So let's walk through what's happening here. First, a prompt to specify the two agents that we have and when to use them. So for current events, we use our research agent. For math, we use our math agent. We then supply our agents to create supervisor, supply our model. We specify the output mode, which we talked about right here. So this output mode determines when you pass information back to the supervisor from any agent, do you only pass back that final message indicating the agent output, or do you pass back the entire agent's message history? So you can you can control that if you want. And we supply our prompt. Then we compile and run. So I'm in Langsmith, and let's actually walk through the trace and kind of compare this to the diagram to make sure we're very clear about what's happening. So first we start with the supervisor. We can look at that OpenAI model call. We can see the supervisor basically has two handoff tools, transfer to the research expert, transfer to the math expert, okay? We can see we receive a system prompt, which we specified. We have the human input, and we have a tool call to transfer to the research expert. So that's step one. Now that corresponds with what we see right here. So human input and a tool call by our supervisor to hand off to one of our two agents. The tool is called. We can see it outputs this handoff, which tells it where to go. And we go to the research expert. So now we're inside our agent and we can see that the model receives, this was the original human input. This is that tool call from our supervisor to go to the research expert. This is the tool that actually executed the handoff. And now the research expert makes a decision to call its search tool. And we can see it kicks off a few different queries for various FANG companies. Then the tools are called. Let's look at our diagram quickly. So we're basically in here. And again, as we saw, this all gets transferred over. Our agent makes a decision to call tools. Those tools are called, in this case, it's search tools. The agent receives the output of those tool calls and provides a final answer. This is basically the final agent response no more tools are called because it's effectively answered the question. So now you can see one important thing. When the agent is finished, this additional tool call is executed that says transfer back to supervisor. That's basically that handoff tool call and it's executed. The tool message is also appended to our message history. So that is what's represented right here. The agent says I'm done, handoff back. Now we're back under supervisor and confirm with the tool message saying we're successfully back. The supervisor can then decide what it wants to do next. We can look at the LLM call and it makes the decision, hey, I should transfer to the math expert. The handoff is done just like before. There we go, we saw that previously. Now we're inside our math expert and it follows just like we saw before. Now we're just inside our agent. Our agent goes ahead and executes the arithmetic necessary. And once it completes, we go ahead and pass that back to the supervisor, which then finishes and provides the final answer to the user's question. So I don't show in this diagram that second iteration of going to the math agent, but it follows the exact same handoff flow. That's the key point. We basically go first to that search agent. Search agent does a bunch of work. We bounce back out to the supervisor. Supervisor can then call the next agent to follow up on that work. And you can see this message history will just grow accordingly with the response from the math agent. And that's exactly all that's happening. So we've seen this basic flow where you can set up a single supervisor, you can connect it to any number of agents, and it can run. Now I do wanna highlight briefly that this is also hierarchical. So you can have supervisors that manage other supervisors. So you can kind of have an, an org chart in the way that a real organization would. You can have like a CEO, and then you can have supervisors that manage each of themselves a small team of agents. So I'll show an example of this briefly. So let's just define a few new tools, one for precipitation and weather. And I'm gonna define two teams. One's a math team. These are two different agents that do math. 
and a weather team, two different agents that do weather. And I'm gonna create a supervisor for each one. So there's gonna be a supervisor over my math team, supervisor over my weather team. And I can have a hierarchical supervisor and I just pass in the math supervisor and weather supervisor. Again, all I need to do is just modify the names and the prompts. It's pretty simple. And you can run it just like before. And we can look at the message history here, which is pretty cool. So the top level supervisor basically takes this request and relays it to the weather team. We get the response back from the weather team and it's transferred back to the supervisor. Supervisor then answers the question. And we can look at that in the trace. You can see the top level supervisor calls the weather team, hands off to the weather team. The weather supervisor will transfer us to the temperature expert. The temperature expert then, again, the handoff has been made, makes the tool call, get temperature. So we're naturally, this temperature expert is our agent. We get the tool call back and we get the response. It'll be 80 degrees. That goes back to the weather supervisor. The weather supervisor then makes a decision to transfer to the precipitation expert, which checks on the rain, sunny. And the weather supervisor receives then the results from both of the resulting agents and responds with the full weather back to the top level supervisor, which then relays that back to the user. So it works just like before, except we basically have a hierarchical system now where a top level supervisor relays to other supervisors that themselves manage multiple agents. So just to recap, Landgraph Supervisor is a new library to build multi-agent teams. It uses a supervisor pattern where you can connect agent to a supervisor. The supervisor handles the handoff of information to the agents and then receives information back from the agents and that's all configurable. So again, as mentioned, you can control what you pass back from the agents to the supervisor. I hope this gives you a good sense for how to build multi-agent teams using this pattern and feel free to leave any comments or questions below. Thanks.